Hey guys, this is Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Welcome to episode 11 of Building My Garage. So today I'm going to be putting in rebar in the slab and in the footer. So stick around to see the whole process from start to finish. All right, let's get started. I wanted to go ahead and mark the layout on this rebar because I went with the 3 8 inch and I'm going to do 18 inch spacing. So my concrete guy told me code here is whatever is 52 times greater than the size of the rebar you're using is what the spacing can be. So that's a little bit on the safe side because like I did it 52 times 3 8 inch would be something like 19 inch something spacing I think. So I did 18. So I'm going to go 18 inch spacing and then if you do half inch you can go two foot spacing because I think it comes out to like 25 inches. So what I decided to do since it saved me some money I don't want to skimp on this but put half inch here in the footer and I put 3 8 inch here on top. So that's what my plan is to do that. And so I went ahead and marked out on the edges and the center. And some of these marks are still from doing the PEX tubing, which I didn't end up using that, by the way. So that was a complete waste of time, but it didn't take that long. So I made these lines. So I figure if I do edge center, that should be good. And then also going this way across, I did it like quarter, three quarter, and the two ends. So I think that should work out good for that. So that's what I did. It'll give me something to reference off of. You guys can do it however you want. This is just something, just an idea. So do with it what you want. Okay, so I think I mentioned before in the footers here, I got these chairs. That's what they're called. And I got the wider ones because they're sitting down in here. So the rebar is going to sit on top of here and here. And so what I'm going to do, just kind of, as I go, I'm going to kind of center it in this footer, I think. And I'm going to make the bend here. All right, guys, so I think I've showed you these before a little bit. I alluded to them. I was going to show you. So these are called chairs. They're rebar chairs, and they sit in the bottom like this for the footer. And they just keep it up off the bottom because when they're pouring this, they don't want to have to pull this up with rakes like they do on the floor here. But what it does, it just makes it stronger that way. So what I did is I got some to sit every so many feet. I apologize, I picked this corner because it's shady right now and it's really hot this evening, so I'm going to have to work around this radiant thing a little bit. But what I was going to talk about is I have 20 foot sticks of rebar. Usually, the way they come, unless you get it like at Lowe's or Home Depot, you can get 10 foot sticks, but they're a lot more expensive, so it's cheaper to go from a local lumber yard and get these 20 foot sticks. What I'm going to do back here, since I have 40 feet of rebar, 32 feet of building, what I'm going to do, I have eight feet extra. So I bent it and I got about four feet here. You can just kind of guess it if you want because they're going to get wired together. You just don't want to short yourself. But what I did, I got this cheap rebar bender. It's a three pin rebar bender, just a cheap one, Bond brand. See kind of what I'm using there. And I'll put a link down in the video description where you can find it if you want to get something like this. It's pretty simple, but works pretty effective, actually. So for this, I just kind of guess four feet and I start with stage one. You can just bend it. It's made to bend up to 5 8 3 bar, and this half inch bends no problem. Then you pick it back up and go to the second pin, and you can get it 90 degrees. I'm going to lay this in here. Now this one, since I have the radiant in the way, I'm going to have to feed it through. But yeah, essentially this is what you're doing. You're just kind of bending it like that. These ones you could wire together because now they're done. I don't have a whole lot extra coming this way because I have 56 feet and I have 60 feet of rebar. So by the time they lap each other a little, I like to lap them at least six inches, maybe a foot. But you just got to do what you got to do. If you only have them lapping a little bit, you know, that's okay. If you got extra, that's great. So in the footer here, I wanted a half inch just to make it a little stronger. And I got enough of these to go like every four or five feet. I think they're pretty cheap, but I would just want them to be supported well. I think I figured four per 20 foot sticks, that'd be about five feet. Then I got this one right here. It's going to be where the lap is, is kind of what I'm hoping. But these are pretty cheap. I think they're like $1.39 or something like that a piece. I got these at Lowe's. I could have got them at the local lumber yard, but I think for stuff like this, it's a little cheaper sometimes to get it at big box stores. So I think for this, the one I was talking about measuring, instead of actually measuring, pulling a tape out, I'm just going to lay it on here, verify that I'm lapping at least a foot or so, and then I'm just going to approximate it right here give myself a little bit extra and since I have the rebar bender right here and yeah you want to be careful to not poke your vapor barrier at all now that's all sitting pretty nice yeah you can see I'm lapping about a foot there so that's good
The next thing I wanted to tell you about is these rebar tie wires. Now you can get just spools of wire and pliers and I know I'm going to get comments. People are saying it's much faster to just tie it that way. If you're experienced, go for it. I think for just the everyday DIY person, these are so nice because they have a built-in loop on each end. So you just put it through the loop like this and you just spin it a few times and done. You can get one of these if you want, or you can get a spool of wire and use a pair of pliers, whatever is easiest for you. Sometimes they twist off if you do them too much. If you need to do any readjusting with your chairs, now's the time before you wire it together. So yeah, then when you start on that end, you can kind of just keep going around all the way around. And I like to kind of tie it as I go, as long as it's not where it's going to overlap, because then it keeps it in place. You can see how much I had to lap over there, not quite as much as back there. But then over in the middle here, I had like lots of room to lap over. And then over here, I had lots to bend. You just work it as you go. And overall, it seems to work out that way. I had enough left over from the radiant heat tubing to do one more loop on the outside off into the footer. Not too much into the footer, but just off the slab a little bit. I just kind of wanted to get it a little bit closer to the edge if I could. And so I'm just going to try it. I had enough in there to do one more loop, which means I'm going to have to add two more of the conduit there and extend my board a little bit. But I'm going to try it and see how it goes. If it doesn't work, I'll update you on that. But what I'm planning to do now, get it in there, just loosely, get all my rebar in place there, and then I can zip tie it or something from the bottom up and then hold it in place that way. So going forward, if you see some tubing laying in the ditch, that's why. Okay, so I'm starting with the rebar that goes down in the ditch here. And you had seen before where I did the footer. So now what I'm doing is I'm using my bender and I'm bending all these ones coming across here. So I laid them all out here pretty much right where they go, as you can see. Kind of got them all scattered out. I went down through and did every fifth one or so for now, but you don't have to do that. I just did it to kind of secure things where they go, just to kind of give you an idea of why I did that. So what I'm doing is bending this just kind of in place here like this. But what I'm doing is I figured out that right by this pin right here is kind of where the radius is because you have to kind of experiment with the depth. So I just got something like this, like a sawzall blade, which is nine inches. That's a good gauge. That seems to be a really good height for these. So what I'm doing is just do this instead of pulling a tape out every time or marking them because you want to get these the right height so they're not going to interfere with the top of the concrete. You know, you don't want them too low. You don't want them too high. And you can also adjust them a little bit down there as far as when you wire tie them. So that worked out really good. So when you see me do this in the time lapse, that's what I'm doing. I'm just using a gauge, a repeatable gauge. This is just something that was nine inches and it's easy to use. So you can find yourself a stick or anything like that. A lot faster than pulling out a tape and a pencil every time or a Sharpie to mark them. So guys, I don't think I mentioned it a whole lot in the video, but any of the tools that I'm working with, I'll try to link down in the video description below the video, anything that I think might be helpful to you. So like this one in particular, it seems to work really well. It's pretty reasonably priced and yeah, it does a good job. So I am going to link this one because I recommend it just from everything that I've used so far. But at all times, any links that I think will be helpful, I'll put down in the video description. So all the way down this side and the other side, I got all the rebar bent and in and secured. Then I went down through the middle and I put one wire tie kind of in the middle of where all those ones overlap. So now what I'm going to do is start laying them out. I did actually on that side over there already. I'm going to start laying the other way, this way. And what I like to do is just get them hanging over the edge a little so I can grab them. And then I bend them all in place. I just picked a number. I think it was 9 or 10 inches. And it worked really good like that sawzall blade that I showed you. So I'm just going to scatter some more out here. Scatter the middle section in there. Before I tie all that together then I'll go and secure all the ends where they go. And this is where the paint marks have really come in handy for the layout. Because when I'm wire tying them, I can just get them right in there very close. And you can see some of this rebar is bent and it goes back and forth a little. But I'm just trying to get an average of 18 inches. So since I have 19 and a half or whatever to work with, it's okay if things vary a little bit. But you can also straighten these a little bit when you go to tie them all together. All right, guys, so I'm back here on my radiant heat, getting this tied in now that I got the rebar in. So I wanted to show you, it did work out for me to put that extra piece of tubing that I had left over out here in the footer more. I didn't want to go too far into the footer, but I just went a little bit out from there just because I had the tubing and I figured I'll get a little closer to the edge, but not get too close. So I just zip tied that fast. I don't want to use wire on that like I did on the rebar. So I just zip tied that all the way around, brought it over to here. 
the tubing ended up being a little bit short, but not much. But I got that one capped. And then from what I had showed you last time, I ended up cutting this and adding one more row here because I had one more pipe. So that's what I did there. And then what I did, I just got an air compressor hooked in here. This is what's nice about having a shutoff valve. You can get this all hooked up. And then I want to shoot for 75 PSI. And so you just open this up and you can add a little bit. See, I was almost there already. Right now I'm sitting right at 75. And then since this is shut off, you can just disconnect this and it doesn't go down at all. So what you want to do is just keep an eye on this. At least 24 hours before your pour, you want to do this, maybe even longer. I got everything hooked up. I'm kind of down to the last couple of days, but this is going to be at least 48 hours or more that this is going to sit. But I'm going to come out tomorrow night and check it. Maybe even tomorrow morning when it's only 12 hours, I'll come out and check it. So yeah, you want to check it at least 24 hours and then just keep an eye on it. If it does go down a little bit, what you could do if you're worried about it, if it's just a little bit, it could be temperature changes sometimes. So you want to watch that. Sometimes if it heats up, it could expand a little bit. But for the most part, it should stay pretty close. If it's going to leak much, it'll be significant probably. So what you can do, you can get a spray solution, a leak detector for this, but you can also just make your own with like soap and water, make it quite soapy and just spray it on all these different connections. Anywhere there's a fitting, spray it on there and just watch it for a little bit and it'll start bubbling really slowly. So that's how you can tell if one of these isn't tight or something. You need to recrimp it, redo it. So that's a way to check that. So check for any fittings. Also, if you have fittings in here, all these fittings, you can spray test them. Make sure that none of this is leaking. Make sure your gauge isn't leaking. So all kinds of things. I've used this one before, so I haven't had trouble with it leaking. And I crimped everything really good, so I'm hopeful that I won't have any trouble there either. But that's just to give you an idea how to make a simple pressure tester and how to hook them up. You can tie them in with plugs on one end of the loop and just tie these in on the other end. Or if you have enough of these, you can just tie them all together. But this is just a simple, easy way to do it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. The next video is going to be the final checklist of all the things that I did before pouring the concrete slab, from putting foam around all the gaps and cracks to measuring for garage door openings and marking those for the concrete guys. Just a list of things that I cover that I thought that might be helpful to you. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.